Hey, hello. So welcome back to another video. Today's video is all about this Zion Crane 2S. Now previously you probably would have seen a video of me introducing this into the channel, just showing some features and stuff like that using gimbal work. Uh, but today I want to kind of do a in-depth review setup kind of video just so uh, you guys can get a full understanding of this from my point of view. So today's video may be a long one, so make sure you just get yourself a drink, get some food, kick those feet up, and let's get involved. So I apologize for this big old light I have here blocking half of the video for you guys, but it was the best position I could find for it. So let's go over exactly what I have here um, as far as my setup goes. Now, before we begin, let me just say all these thoughts, all these opinions are my own. Zion Crane did send me out this product so I can do a review, so I can do an overview and things like that. But all these opinions will be my own. Yes, that's my ring hitting the table aggressively. All right, so let's just let's just get involved here. So as you can see, I have the big old Zion Crane 2S box, and this is this is the big old box that you get with it. I also have the handle here. Now this handle is called the the Trans Mount Crane 2S Sling Grip Handle. So that's that for any of you guys that may be interested in purchasing it. The reason why I went with getting the the handle there and i said to zion yo i need to kind of get the handle going on is because essentially originally i wanted to test out the the 3s right i like that whole kind of under slung kind of style um and you can't really get that on these gimbals well you can but i mean it just takes a lot more strain having that handle really takes the strain out so basically i've got this handle with it and inside this box here I mean, obviously my crane's already set up, so I'll just show you what you get, because you get a pretty cool case this time around, which is a bit different to the Crane 2, if you're an owner of one of those, like I am. So let me just show you what you get here. Cool. All right, inside there is just a little um, information pack, you know, uh, warranty setup and things like that. Yeah, you get this pretty cool looking case. I like this thing. It's got little clips at the front here. You can unclip that, keeps it nice and safe open on up and obviously normally your cranes here will be in here bag of cables in there all sorts of accessories but some things you may notice that are missing when it comes to this crane compared to the crane 2 is on the crane 2 i had the uh, the follow focus motor and the whole you know the the focus rings for your lenses they all came with it right it's not here on this one so if you're purchasing this bear that in mind you don't get those with this, there may be like, I don't know if it's like a pro pack or something like that you can buy and you get all those things in there. Jesus, so much dust in here. But um, with this bug standard, how it is, you don't get it. The only extra accessories you get is like this little thing here. I don't know if you guys can see that. This is just to prop up your lens to make sure it's not sagging too much on your, uh, on your crane too there. And also you get one of these little hot shoes and this helps you shoot vertically which is something that you can do on the crane 2s which is a, a kind of a key feature really so yeah that's kind of all you get in a box and then obviously you get a little a little box here full of all the different cables that you need for different cameras and stuff like that and this ends up being your your travel case which is pretty cool and the charger's black instead of white so as far as functionality goes with the crane 2s it's very similar to every other gimbal you've probably used in the past is basically exactly the same as the crane 2 when it comes to the functionality right you got the same kind of follow mechanisms you got the lockdown one the positional kind of follow you got the whole vertical vertigo thing you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna show some snippets of the shorter video that i did inside this so you can kind of see some of the different movements that you can do with this gimbal <laughs> But 
right, let's, let's just begin and get into the video. All right, and so this is what my setup is looking like. As you can see here, I've got my Blackmagic camera on the front there. As I turn this around, I've got my monitor at the back so I can see what's going on. And what that allows me to do then, if you guys can see now, I can hold this downwards. I can look at my monitor and see what I'm filming. We're in the first mode, which is PF, which is basically just a normal follow mode, as you can see here. I move here, it slowly starts to turn, just with the flow of what I'm doing, which is pretty cool. All right, so we'll use this function and then we'll move on to the locking mechanism, which just locks on one location. Cool. So hopefully that just walking into the forest thing turned out okay in the follow mode. What I'm going to switch over into now is a lock mode. And what that does is if I press this button here, just one, oops, press it just once. I'm looking in this direction. No matter what I do with the gimbal, the gimbal's constantly going to be looking over there in that direction and try to stay there perfectly. Now, there's many techniques you can do using this locking kind of method but I'm just going to use it to lock in on one particular tree and just move around it kind of thing. So let's see how that one goes. <laughs> cool. So the final mode I'm going to test, there's a few more modes inside this, this gimbal here, but for the purpose of this video, the final mode I want to test is the vortex mode. Now what the vortex mode does is basically you can focus on something and the camera does a complete 360 spin kind of thing, right? For that though, I'm going to have to take off my HDMI cable here. So let's just take that off. Boom. Uh, and then now the camera can spin freely without pulling the cable out of the monitor. So let's get some of those shots and see how that one goes. So those are some of the functions that you get built into this gimbal. Now there's a lot more things going on, but I haven't had time to test them all out yet. Like obviously there's the app that you can use for this thing. Um, I think there's other apps out there on the market where you can actually track, follow people and stuff like that. I'm not too sure because I haven't tested those out yet, but obviously there's more functionalities with inside the gimbal itself with regards to movement, like there's POV mode where it kind of has more of a point of view kind of follow as it would say in the name and stuff like that there's a few other things in there but they are pretty much the same deal as what you got on the crane too now let's get into kind of my little mini review here of the actual crane 2s itself first thing you'll notice about this crane is there are some slight differences now the design is a lot more gold and black as you can see carbon fiber handle here not sure it makes any big difference but it does feel like it's got a bit of a better grip to it I must say but the biggest thing you'll notice is for me it feels a lot heavier than the crane 2 that's because the motors are way way stronger and that's one thing I will say about this this is kind of you see now with my crane 2 right I would put my at the time I was using uh, Sony a7 and things like that then I moved on to the Fuji cameras I was using that and now I'm using the black magic camera so obviously the weight has progressed with you know each camera that you get the problem is is when i started to rig if i was to rig out my black magic camera which is filming this now and put it on the crane too it just wouldn't be able to handle it it'd be sagging it'd be wobbling it'd be struggling whereas on this thing i don't know what the limit is the payload limit for this thing but it handles whatever i throw i'll show you later we'll do a little build out we'll we'll set it up we'll deconstruct it and we'll set it back up again right just so you guys can see how that works but I'm going to throw my whole camera on here, everything, I mean my whole camera, my cage, my external cage, my wooden handle, my monitor, my 
uh, audio device set up, my batteries set up, my hard drive, you know, SSDs. I'm going to throw everything on there and just show you that this thing can still hold that weight, which is shocking. I mean, it gets ridiculously heavy. And that's been one thing I will say, right? So I took this out on, I'd say, four, four different shoots now, right? One thing to note is this is still on its first charge of battery. I'll switch this thing on, but it, it'll rattle like crazy because I've got no weight on it. So uh, this is not really advice to do. But let's just check how many bars of battery this thing's got. This is going to sound horrendous. All right. Lord have mercy, that is not advised. And Zion's probably going to kick my... Uh... So it had three bars of battery left. I think four bars is full. So basically, you can, we're talking about 75, 80% battery still left on this now bear in mind those four shoots that i did was only on the black magic camera and i was rigging a lot of things on the camera right so i didn't have a monitor actually on the camera what i would do is i'll put the monitor here on on the handle but we'll talk about my setup in a second um so that took a little bit of weight out of it i wouldn't i didn't have any audio devices connected to it i just used the the camera and the ssd and um and yeah i'm, I'm still <laughs> After four shoots, and those shoots was about an hour, two hours maybe uh, each, I've still got 75, 80% battery. So this thing kicks for a long time. And I think the batteries are the same batteries you get in the Crane 2. I'm not sure if you can interchange them. Not too sure on that. Uh, another thing I will say is regarding the follow focus, now you don't get it in a box, right? So I was thinking, can I use the follow focus from my Crane 2 on this one? And I thought I'd just email Zion and, and ask them that question. And they said, no, the functionalities are completely different. So apparently that won't work. So maybe I wouldn't advise you guys to try that if, you know, you've got a spare one. For, because some reason I purchased my crane too and I got two follow focus motors with it. Uh, so maybe you're thinking, oh, I'd just, you know, sell the old one, keep one of the motors and then bang it on this thing. I don't think it's advised. Maybe something weird might happen. I don't want to, you know, mess with things like that and destroy it. I'm tempted but I don't want to do that, you know what I mean? One thing I will say is the weight of this thing does start to get heavy, right? Especially the way I hold it. So I hold it in this kind of position here. So I have the legs here, you know, sorry, the legs folded away and I hold it in this position. So the camera's kind of, obviously we unlocked right now. The camera's kind of in this underslung position, kind of more so up here. Let me lock it for you. There we go. So the camera's kind of like this and it's, it's a great way to hold it. Uh, but after a while, this starts to get heavy, but it's cool. You can just switch sides and stuff like this. But obviously, if we was using any kind of follow focus, we kind of need to have our thumbs in this position. But uh, it does get tiring. I'd say you probably get tired 30% faster than you would with the original Crane 2, just from the weight itself. But then you'll get tired even more faster because you'll be tempted to put more and more gear on this thing because you know it can hold it perfectly. This now is kind of engineered towards using like black magic cinema cameras and things like that. Cameras with like weird shapes, this thing works very well with. On the whole, Crane 2, the previous one, you have to get all sorts of counterbalancing weights and weird things to make it work. Whereas this one, it has this plate that goes this way. So as you can see here so this one comes off completely right so you can put a camera on here that has a big stick out part that way big stick out part that way and you don't need to kind of offset it do you know what i mean you can kind of just put it in here um and if it needs to go left or right you can simply do that you know sliding this way here which is pretty cool right and then you've got the generic you know back and forth slide like this so it's made for these kind of weirdly shaped cinema cameras like the black magic cinema camera which is dope also at the side here you probably notice i'm not sure if you guys can see that properly but the side here we have a hot shoe this is where that hot shoe mount thing goes you just screw it in here like you would on a normal tripod and then your camera can be working vertically so if you're working with things for like you know instagram and stuff like that uh, that'd be super dope i haven't done that yet but i will make a video like that on the channel at some point um, so stick around for that one another welcomed upgrade which i really liked about this thing is the fact that now it has these locking mechanisms everywhere. So unlike the old Crane 2, which is basically like this, you're putting it on your shoulder, your camera's spinning around, you don't know what's broken when you come to look at it. Finally, this thing now completely locks. So you can just press this from any position, like this, boom. Give them a little twist. And then they're all, it's all locked in a nice position there. And I think there's two locking positions. So you got this one, which is kind of like the, the open locking position, right? Um, 
and then I think we can get one around, is it this angle? I mean, yeah, yeah. So it locks up there. And then I think this bottom one, wherever the lock's gone on there, can lock around here. There you go. So it's kind of a, a little bit more compact locked position. So it's kind of like two locking position things on this gimbal. Um, I mean, there's not much more other than to talk. Everyone knows what gimbals do and how they perform. And this thing performs real sweet. It's super smooth. I mean, I'll overlay some, some footage that I've got with this thing. I mean, a lot of it's shot in slow motion because slow motion just looks epic. You combine slow motion with this gimbal and you end up with some amazing results. At first, when I first um, set the gimbal up for the very first time, I put my Black Magic on there. I was a bit kind of um, laid back. I didn't put too much items on the Black Magic. And then it ended up being too light for the motors on this thing. So it was actually kind of vibrating. And I was like, why is it, why is it vibrating? I set it to the lowest motor setting and a vibrating kind of when, but it was still kind of there. And then I realized that I needed just to add more weight to my camera. So I put more bigger thing. I put the batteries on there, put all those things I was holding back on. I put that on the camera, then suddenly solid, absolutely beautiful. And that's on the lowest setting. So I don't know what would happen if you, what camera you can put on this and you put it on the high setting. I have no idea. Maybe an Arri Alexa. I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, not, not full Arri Alexa, but... <laughs> Maybe the mini or a red cam, something like that. Z cams, they'll be perfect on, the, on this. This has got so much power in this thing that it's just incredible. And I think that's why the battery lasts for so long because it's really not pushing its limits using the Blackmagic camera on this. Uh, another thing as well, I haven't used it yet as well, but one thing I've heard about is you can control camera features through the actual unit itself. I haven't done it yet. It's something, another thing that I want to do, but I kind of just wanted to get my overview of this video out there. But uh, I think you can do some control, some functionalities of the camera right there and then as you're using it, which I think is beneficial. The app apparently is supposed to be really good for that as well. So I really want to dig deep into that, maybe do a whole video just about the app and stuff like that. So yeah, as far as my review goes, I really like this gimbal. It's not so light. I will say like, it's going to take its toll. When it comes to weight, it takes its toll on you. But um when it comes to functionality, it just feels so much more durable, so much more solid than the, um, than the older Crane 2. I notice there's a lot more um, ports on this thing as well. There's like ports here, there, two at the front. So I'm guessing this thing can accessorize this thing a lot more than the, the Crane 2. Now, one thing I have seen on the internet is people adjusting the position of the actual gimbal itself. So hold on, let me just try and show you what I'm talking about. So when we get this here, and you'll see this when I do my whole setup in a few minutes, um, my setup kind of has a cage and then a top handle on top, right? So when, I come, when it comes to kind of tilt in this direction, back on itself, the top handle hits this motor here, right? Um, but I've seen on the internet that they, they've actually made it so that you can change the motor position from here to a downward angle, a little bit lower down here, which should help the handle kind of move around and miss hitting the motor there, which is, which is quite interesting. I'm definitely going to try that one out, but I haven't got around time to, to doing that just yet. So overall, this is a great gimbal. I think the price is decent. When I first bought the Crane 2, I think it cost me around, and, and this was the best deal I could find. It's about three, I think it's about 370 or so, something like that, where I think this one comes in at about 500 and it makes sense to do so because I mean, you're not going to feel limited to what cameras you're using. I'm not sure what cameras you guys are using, but I mean, for me, the Blackmagic is probably one of the biggest, bulkiest cameras I've ever used, and it just works like a dream on this thing. So, yeah, as far as that goes, it's worth the upgrade. Um, it's solid as a rock in its functionality, and uh, it's just, yeah, it's a pleasure to use, man. And the fact the battery lasts so long is just beautiful. So, let's tear this thing down and do a quick setup well, using the whole of my, uh, my rig and just see how this thing works and show you how it performs. Now, there's a few things that you may need which Zion already packed inside the box. One of them being this little Allen key thing here because they made it a little bit easier this time. You know, previously you would have to get, um, you see on the bottom of these plate things, I might have to zoom in because I'm just using one camera here. But um, you know, you got your whole screw in here where you screw your camera on top, right? Now it used to just be the fact that you got to use a coin or some flat surface, you know what I mean? To dig inside a groove and turn it. Well, now they've kind of made a groove perfectly for the Allen key to go in here. 
so you can turn it, get a bit more of a torque, a bit more strength going on there. So essentially all you really need is the Allen key that's inside the box and your plate there, obviously. Let me talk about the, the rig that I've got here. So this is my Blackmagic cinema camera rig. As you can see, it's quite a beastly bulky thing here. So let me run you through my setup. So as you can see here, I've got my whole camera with a lens on there, an old vintage 28 millimeter lens, as well as a speed booster. So there's a little bit of weight going at the front. Uh, I've got this cage going around, which is a typical small rig cage that you can get. And then I've got an outer skeleton cage, which is housing the handle, the wooden block here. And um, basically just, it just adds a bit more rigidity to it, a little bit more accessibility to it for me. And then on the side here, I have some connectivity ports. I have my SSD just here underneath my handle. And then to the left side of that, I have my battery port from Fotka on there. And then to the left of that, I then have a microphone holder alongside my Lilliput monitor at the front. So there's a lot going on. This is not a light setup. There's a lot of weight to this thing, but um, we'll see today if this can handle all of this. Now I haven't tested it yet with everything attached like this. So previously I've tested it without the monitor on there um, and without the outer skeleton cage. I just had the normal small rig, you know, cage that goes around the body. Uh, and then I just attached my battery and my SSD on top. I haven't tried it fully loaded like this yet with the top handle. So this should be um, quite a fun experiment to start with. So let me just run you quickly how I used to have it set up on the, on the crane here. Now I'm not gonna take the handle off because I, I think it's really kind of easy to set this thing up. I mean, it, it's, really, it's really not hard whatsoever. I mean, you just unscrew this, put it in your position you want and you just screw this around the column. There's nothing special about that. So we'll leave that how that is. But previously, imagine I had a monitor hooked onto the hot shoe that's on top of this, uh, the handle here. So you basically, you've got, a, you've got a threaded screw here where you can screw something in, or you've got a, a cold shoe mount on top there. So when you put the camera in this position, you can say, let's pretend this is our monitor. You slide that in on the hot shoe and you can see what's going on on the monitor there. So that's how I had it previously. But today, for all bants and pleasure, we're going to attach every single item I use on my camera onto the gimbal to see if it can actually handle it. This should be fun. So let's um, reset everything, push it all into positions that I just not previously set up so that we can, oh, sorry, it's, it's locked. So if you're wondering why I didn't leave, let's, well, all right. So it's well and truly not set up right now. So. Let's set this thing up. There's an arrow at the top here and then there's an arrow on the actual plate itself here. So this arrow needs to go alongside the same location as the arrow that's on the gimbal, if that makes sense. So it flows in this way. As you can see, the two arrows are going in the same direction. That's what I mean. So this would then go to the front here with the camera attached, slide in. And then as it slides in like that, it has its own little locking mechanism. So no matter what you do now, you can't physically come out of the section and then the side here now instead of those little screw things which we had before which are quite irritating we can get it where we want and then we just push the lever boom locked in and then we have obviously this section here another lever this allows it to extend out to accommodate the mass of our camera which i'm hoping is going to fit with this cage i just thought about that so let's have it on the most extended to start this thing out all right then, let's put this plate on the bottom of our camera here. Really convenient, just tighten it up with the Allen key. Boom. You don't have to go too aggressive. And there you go, that's, that's locked in. Okay, cool. So now, it's the simple task of balancing this thing. One thing I will say is I do not think personally that this will balance super easily. I think it's not gonna sit perfectly balanced. Just for the fact that it's so tall now. If you look at this, right? We've got so much different angles and different pulls uh, of gravity and weight. For instance, the monitor being tilted in different angles will affect the way it's set up. So I wouldn't advise having a monitor on your camera when you're setting up on this gimbal. Anyway, I probably wouldn't advise having a top handle, but if you're just one of those guys that's lazy like myself and just think, oh, I'm just gonna bung this on the, tri on the gimbal, take it back off, go straight into action, then um, that's what this experiment's all about, I guess. 
I'm matching these arrows up, so I'm sliding the camera in backwards this way. Just heard it click in, so it's locked in. As you can see there, the clearance, it slides in nicely. Very nice clearance. We're hanging over to one way. Let me just lock this in place here. Look at this. Boy, oh boy, we are... We're flying over that side. So what we need to do now is because we're very heavy on the left side here, I'm gonna turn the, the gimbal around so you guys can see. I'm gonna try and do this in reverse. We're gonna to have to adjust this section here so that it can line up perfectly, right? So let's undo this one. Unfortunately, the one, these ones still have the screws like the old method. And let's just push it all the way to the opposite side. Let's see what happens. Boom, okay, so now we're too heavy to the the right side. I'm going to lock the front axis so it doesn't wobble forwards right now. I'm just trying to fix this left and right maneuver. So as you can see, you see what's happening there? He wants to flick that way. He wants to flick this way. It kind of really can't balance itself perfectly there. So let's, um, it really wants to push that way. I think this is going to be a very hard balance just because of the fact the reason why this is happening is because there's, there's the whole wooden handle on this side there's the battery on this side there's the ssd there's the um the microphone holder so no matter what you do even if you aim it this way it's going to drop down because the cage is so heavy on this way it's going to pull because the damn handle's so heavy so i don't think we're going to get a great lock when it comes to that so let's just lock this one in, in its position and let's hope that the gimbal's strong enough to deal with that now you'll notice, look at this, it's swaying by itself right now because it's got so much weight. So what we need to do is we need to adjust this bottom section here. Whoa, it's so heavy it could just topple at any minute using this, this little cog here. So already loosened. I'm just going to pull that this way a little bit, pull it a little bit further back, even more. Keep going until that sway stops. Okay slowing down i mean there's a lot of wobble going on now jeez i mean this is a lot of countering weights that stopped there all right there's a lot of countering weights here a lot of moving things that are not really fixed in position like that monitor wants to wobble these little rubber things want to wobble like ugh. it's a it's kind of an ugly <laughs> way to set things up so the last axis we can deal with now is this one that I've locked here, which is controlling the camera flapping backwards and forwards. This is just going to be crazy because th there's so much, like, I mean, look at that. Uh, there's nothing I, I think I can do there, but there is a latch. Oops, before I smash my camera to bits. There's a latch just here at the back, just under this arm. I can't really show you guys there, but what that does is it lowers the height. So we'll pull that now. It should just drop down because this camera's so heavy. Okay, okay, it doesn't just drop, it's slow. So let's just try that position there. I mean, that's just gonna, I, I doubt we're gonna be able to fix this one. Boom. <laughs> okay, no matter what we do, as you can see, this isn't properly set up with all this weight. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Let's, let's hope nothing goes bang, you know? Let's hope that this can actually control this weight. So let's switch it on here and see what happens. Boom. And this is on the lowest. Oh. Oh. Okay. I got a warning for my axis is locked. So I've got an axis here, which is still locked somewhere. So let's unlock this one. Ah, it's this one here. Well, there you go. That's how smart this thing is. Let's switch this thing on once more. See if you can hold the weight. Okay. We are level. I have now got control. As you can see, I've turned my parameters down so we can slowly move around. This has got nothing to do with the, um, the motor strength. This is just how much I've tuned the gimbal to be. So let's get that level. As you can see, the camera is level right now. It's holding the weight. There's no weird juddering, grinding sounds or anything like that. Let's pick this thing up. Now, as I said before, like this, the motor really kind of needs to be repositioned or it's going to hit this handle here, as you can see there. But as you can see, the gimbal is so strong, even when it's, oops, I hit the handle. Even when it's unbalanced, look at this. It is literally still able to hold the weight of this camera. I'm gonna move it close to my microphone for you. Take a listen to this. No juddering, no motors making any weird sounds. It's literally holding the weight. 
So I did not set this gimbal up correctly. I would never advise you to set it up the way I've set it up. But as you can see, it's strong enough to make many, many mistakes. Okay, let me change this up to 50. I had it down to 14. I don't know why I had it so slow. But as you can see now, at 50, it can rotate around a lot quicker. I mean, I'm shocked here. Let me just turn this, turn this up even more, sorry. Boom. Let's go up to like 100. Just for demonstration purposes. As you can see, nice and quick. I mean, I'm just shocked that this thing can hold all this weight in stupid, weird angles. And look at that. So good. I mean, I need to adjust the speeds on those tilts as well now, but boom. All right. There's not much more to say other than the fact that this thing is a beast. You can make any mistake you want. Don't be worried about balancing it too much. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you managed to finish your tea and, and food, whatever you had. It may have been a long one, um, but I feel like we covered some, some good things here and maybe some good information about this product. So if you are sitting on the fence about upgrading to this thing, maybe this video helped and I hope it did. Uh, and if it did, please, you know, leave a thumbs up. And, and a comment below. But there will be a lot more content coming through soon using this thing. I want to test out the app and see how that works. Uh, and I want to kind of set it up so I can use the functionality of the camera through this thing. I want to see how that works. And then I finally want to get follow focuses on this thing and then see how that works. So if you're interested in seeing those videos, stick around on the channel because I'll be investigating those as we go along. All right then, I guess I'll catch you in whichever video happens to come next. Until then, Peace out.